Okay. Yeah, we're on. It's, a, it's on now, Ian. Ready? It's okay. Are we ready? Yeah. Carmen? Because I know if I carry on without you, you'll tell me off. Right. Um, this is a, a new song, and I wasn't sure whether I was going to play it or not, and now I've committed myself to play it, so um, I don't know, we'll see. This, if I'm going to mess anything up, it'll be this. <laughs> so we'll see. Before infallibility Open university Social networks isolate the lonely Like reality on TV Emergency contraception For underage conception The hangman's joke that follows you Gallows, infertile, no inception. Be not the left or right, my friends. Liberals in their mansions. The apathy of you and me and mass incomprehension. to Carmen and Max because uh, Carmen's heard it several times in, the, in, the, in its making and Max heard it the other night so but don't give it don't tell him how bad it is before we'll just discuss it you sure you're okay yeah, there? fine because I've got one here yeah, it's alright it's okay, okay. Uh, this is called Stella and I'll, um, I'm not going to explain why. Who's Stella? As I say, I'll explain <laughs> later. Let me explain I'll later. Ask why. So, okay. Stan? Hello, mate. You come to listen. Okay. <clears throat> it's 10.15 in the morning, and I'm already on my second walk of the day. The sun is still in the east and streaming into my prescription sunglasses, giving the surroundings a surreal hue. A woman is walking alone some 200 yards behind me, the only blot on my landscape of isolation. Rounding a steep bend, I consider that my left boot requires tightening to bring it into balance with the comfort of the right. This delay has allowed the lone female walker to catch up. She is a woman in her 60s, I judge, though I may be doing her an injustice, dressed in a tweed skirt, sensible shoes and a National Trust sweatshirt. 
A large black handbag adorns her right shoulder. We make eye contact and she speaks, just the usual pleasantries, the weather, the view. As she moves on, I fall into step beside her and the conversation continues. Well, she has clearly listened to the Today programme this morning as she repeats a soundbite regarding the ubiquitous politician involved in his particular scandal. She makes her view on this matter very clear and I conclude that she reads the Daily Mail and believes every word. I hesitate to ask her name and usual place of residence as I fear that her responses will be disgusted and Tunbridge Wells. We continue in this manner discussing the news and latest downturn in the economy until, arriving at the disused lighthouse on the headland, I discover that I am bored with the current small talk. A perfunctory glance in either direction confirms that we are completely alone. I resolve to break the tedium. The opportunity to liven up the proceedings presents itself sooner than I expect when my companion makes reference to the friend with whom she is holidaying. I move close enough to invade her personal space and ask, is it a man friend or a lady friend? She recognises the subtext immediately and I silently commend her perception. She takes a step back from my grinning, inquiring countenance, roots around in her handbag with her right hand, and when it reappears she's holding a small black box with a wrist strap. The two elements are parted and the silence is shattered by a shrill wailing sound. A rape alarm. I laugh and raise my voice to be heard above the din. Ha! Don't kid yourself, Grandma! I'm just having a bit of fun! Her left hand disappears into the handbag and it emerges holding a small aerosol can. My first thought is pepper spray, however unlikely this may be, and I raise my right arm to protect my eyes. I am wrong in this hasty conclusion, recognising that she is attempting to ward me off with a can of impulse body spray. There is only one way that I can see to respond to this turn of events. I present her with a swiftly picked bunch of wild flowers waiting expectantly for her to laugh at my rapidly improvised joke. But no, she simply begins to scream. I hesitate for a moment to listen to the odd harmony created by the combination of scream and rape alarm and to shake my head in disbelief that she didn't see the connection between the impulse spray and my offering of flowers. Funny how wrong one can be sometimes. Then. I do what any minded would do in such a situation. I get the hell out of there as possible. Shut up! And as I run down the hill, I let out a piercing scream that completes a chord with the sounds already present. My only regret is that I didn't have the foresight to bring a recording device with me, but then I hadn't foreseen this happening. By the time I pass through the gate at the bottom of the hill, the scream and the alarm have stopped, as if five bars of wood offer the protection of a closed door. Turning and walking away, I don't worry about the consequences of my actions, because I know that she and I will meet again. Know that I have nothing to fear. Know that the first dwelling she will arrive at, walking in either direction, will be mine. I imagine the look on her face when, seeking refuge in the quaint little cottage, she realises that once again she is confronted with me. I can see her laughing at the irony of the situation before joining me for a cup of herbal tea and a chat. I can hear our conversation as it veers from 19th century Russian literature to the films of Pedro Almodovar, the songs of Jacques Brel. I can see her expression when I tell her that my question regarding the gender of her companion was, after all, superfluous, that I knew all along, can see that same expression change when I inform her that the reason I know is due to the fact that her lady friend is tied up in my woodshed. <laughs> <laughs>
was actually I, w I was walking in the on the coastal path and I um, bumped into this woman who was more or less how that describes there and we were completely alone and I just thought well I just imagine how she would react if I when she because she said about her I've been on holiday with a friend and I just thought I wonder how she'd react if I said is it a man friend <laughs> um, but obviously it had to come out some way so that's where it, that's where it went because it was I thought hey, if I don't I'm going to probably do it so. <laughs> um, I'll probably do one last song and then I'll shut up and get someone else up again. Try this. Okay, I think I've got all the lyrics. Give me a minute. Okay. When a ship is sinking and they lower the lifeboats Hand out the life jackets Then keep on their coats Women and the children Are the ones who must go first I'm the man who try to save their skins Are cowards and are cursed Every man's a captain Men know how to drown Man the lifeboats if there's room Otherwise go down It's the same when there's a war on it's the men who go to fight Women and children are civilians When they're killed it's not right Men kill men in uniform That's the way war goes When they stay they are cowards If they run they are heroes Fields a man's world, cannon fodder's what they're for. It's the men who have the power, it's the men who have the might, and the world's a place of horror because each man thinks he's right. Man's home is his castle, and the family let him in. But what's important in that kingdom are the women and children. A husband and a father, every man's a king. But he's really just a drone, gathers no honey has no sting Happy the arms, the general the king and the captain they know they're expendable after all their men Stay and fight aren't cowards, and, and the ones who run aren't heroes. It's the other way around. I'm not sure.